Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. It's been a minute since I've done a Steam Deck video, and so let's knock one out here today. In this one, we're going to cover a tool called Cryo Utilities. Now this tool has been out for some time, and it just upgraded to a 2.0 release two weeks ago. And honestly, not until very recently did I actually test it out myself. Personally, I've always felt that like the optimizations that Valve has made inherent to SteamOS are good enough. After all, they know their device better than anybody else. And as a result, I'm always a little bit skeptical anytime somebody says they can do it better than Valve. But after doing quite a bit of research about the whole project, I decided to try it out, and yeah, I think it works really well. And it has all the makings of a really good tool. Number one, it is very easy to set up. It only takes about two minutes altogether. And probably my favorite is the fact that it is set and forget. So you only have to do this one time, and then you're good to go. Not only that, the person who has made this utility has been a Linux developer for about 16 years at this point. Point, and so I feel very comfortable with some of those tweaks that they've made. And as I'll show you here in a minute, they've done a really good job explaining the whole process themselves. And so in this video, we're going to install Cryo Utilities and then give it a test spin to see if we can see any differences between gameplay, specifically when it comes to high-end PC games as well as high-end emulation with Nintendo Switch. And I think you'll find here that the results are not super massive, but all the same, they are an improvement. And considering the fact that it only takes a couple minutes to set up, I think it's well worth it. And so without any further delay, let's dive right in. Okay, to start, Cryo Utilities was made by Kyle, who is behind the Cryobyte 33 YouTube channel. And on his channel, he does a lot of deep dives into how to improve specific games or emulators for the Steam Deck. And so if you're the type of person who really wants to dive into the details to get the best performance, this is going to be a great channel for you. And of course, I'll leave this linked below. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, Kyle made a 33 minute video that goes over all of Cryo Utilities 2.0. And in this video, he breaks down every single one of the functions that Cryo Utilities does and why. And so in this video here, I'm not going to retread the same things he went over because honestly, he explains it better than I could. Either way, if you want to learn more about how Cryo Utilities works and why, then I would recommend checking out this video, also linked below. And while you're there, I would recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel in case there are more updates in the future. But let's go ahead and install Cryo Utilities really quickly. To start, you're going to need to be in desktop mode with your Steam Deck, and I would recommend using a keyboard and mouse if you have one available. From there, go ahead and open up a web browser, either Firefox or maybe Microsoft Edge. After that, you can search for Cryo Utilities, or you can go to my website, RetroGameCore.com, and in my Steam Deck guide, I'll have a direct link there as well. Either way, what we're trying to do here is find Cryobyte33's GitHub page. After that, go ahead and scroll down until you get to the README file. Here you can read a little bit more about Cryo Utilities, but the place we actually want to find is the one called Install. Here you're going to have a direct link to be able to download the desktop client, and just right-click on this and select Save Link As. From here, I'd recommend throwing it onto your desktop, and then go to your desktop and open it up. It's going to give you an initial warning that says, do you really want to do this? And you select, yeah, man, I want to do it. From there, it's going to run through a script to download and install the Cryo Utility binary. And that's it, we've now installed it. So now let's actually get it prepped so that we can execute the tool. To start, you're going to need to have a sudo or user password for your Steam Deck. If you don't have this set up already, the easiest way to do this is to open up console, which starts with a K here on your device. And then within this terminal window, type in the word password, P-A-S-S-W-D. From there, press enter. And if you don't have one set up already, it's going to ask you to set up a password. Now I've already done one. And so because of that, it's going to ask me if I want to change my current password. But as you type in your password, you're not going to see any characters or anything else like that, but it's still working. Anyway, after you've established your pseudo password, you are now good to go. You can now close out of console and then we'll open up Cryo Utilities. To start, you're going to get a quick disclaimer. You can press yes here to accept the terms. And then it's going to ask you for that pseudo password that we just set up. After you've added that, you will get the front page of Cryo Utilities. And if you watch Kyle's video, he walks you through this whole process. But at the end of the day, all you really have to do is just tap on this recommended button right here. This will apply all the settings that he recommends. Also of note here, if you ever want to switch back, all you have to do is just press that stock button below it. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to tap on the recommended button here. And depending on how your Steam Deck is set up, this could take anywhere from like two minutes all the way to 30 minutes. So just go ahead and grab a cup of coffee and then wait here. Anyway, after it's done, it's going to say you've successfully applied those recommended settings. And if you go into the swap and memory tabs, you should now see a bunch of text that's highlighted in green. If it's green, that means you are now using his recommended settings. Now, while we're in here, let me talk a little bit about the storage tab, because this is something you may want to go back to. Here you can do two things. The top button will actually sync your game data depending on where the game is actually stored. 
So for example, if you're storing games in your SD card, what it'll do is it'll move all the shaders over to the SD card as well. And this could actually help with removing stutters when you're playing a game. Below that, you have the ability to clean out your game data. For example, when you uninstall a game from SteamOS, it does not delete all of the shader cache for every game. This tool is going to allow you to delete any of that shader cache for games that you've already uninstalled. And so periodically, you may want to do this and save yourself a little bit of storage space. And finally, let's talk a little bit about VRAM. By default, SteamOS uses one gigabyte of video RAM. But in coordination with the other tweaks that we've already done through Cryo Utilities, Kyle actually recommends that you use four gigs instead. Now, this is unfortunately something you cannot do within Cryo Utilities. You have to do it yourself. So let me show you how to do that really quick. And to do this, all you have to do is hold down to the volume up button and then press the power button to start up the machine. Once you hear the little Steam Deck boop sound, you can go ahead and remove your fingers from the buttons. After that, you're going to get access to these four menu options. We want to select the one here on the bottom right. To access this, you can move your trackpad and then use R2 to actually click on it. This will bring you into the Setup Utility window. What we want to do here is go into the Advanced section. And then near the bottom, there is a UMA frame buffer size. What you want to do is click on this and then change that from 1GB to 4 and really, that's all you have to do. From there, you can press the select button to exit and save your changes. And then the Steam Deck is going to reset itself and you should be back in the main SteamOS menu. And to verify the amount of VRAM, you can go into settings and then system. And then you can scroll all the way down till you find the VRAM size and it should now be four gigabytes. And so with all that out of the way, let's get into the testing next. On the top, you're going to see Cryo Utilities turned off and with the default one gigabyte VRAM size. And then of course on the bottom you will see Cryo Utilities turned on with the VRAM of 4GB. Also bear in mind that for my PC games I'm actually pushing them beyond the settings of the Steam Deck. And so for example here I'm running God of War at 800p but on original settings and with no FSR. And that's because I'm actually trying to push the Steam Deck a little bit beyond what it's capable of so we can see a difference between the performance. Generally I would recommend actually playing this game in low settings. Either way, as you can see between the stats on the top and the bottom, we're not getting a big difference here. In fact, the only one that's really a stark difference is the amount of RAM being used. In general, I found that I was using about 2GB of RAM less when using Cryo Utilities. Now when it comes to the frames per second, which you can see on the right, we don't see a lot of difference here. And honestly, it's kind of hard to actually capture this because I'm not playing the exact same thing at the exact same time. And so when it comes down to it, for a couple of games, especially God of War as well as Marvel's Spider-Man, I didn't see a huge difference between the frame rate for either. There were definitely times when I got a more consistent frame rate that was higher for either game, but I would also see similar dips in the frame rate here and there, even with Cryo Utilities on. However, the main difference that I actually felt when it came to the gameplay was a little bit intangible in the fact that it just felt a little bit smoother. Yes, I was still getting some frame rate drops here and there, but I was getting a lot fewer stutters when those dips actually happened. I think Spider-Man's a really good example because anytime you take a really tight turn, it seems to dip just a little bit every time. But I found that with Cryo Utilities on and with those 4GB of VRAM, it was just a more smoother experience. And considering the fact that we're actually using less resources, we're having less RAM being utilized, and the GPU CPU seems to be just about the same, if not a little bit lower, this seems to be a net benefit all around. Not only are we getting smoother gameplay, but we might also have a lower performance tax too, which means a longer battery life in the end. Now for other games, it was a more stark contrast. For example, with Elden Ring, I definitely felt a lot smoother of a gameplay experience, especially when in combat. Typically, when in high settings, I found a lot of stutter, especially when fighting an enemy. And honestly, that's probably the most important part that you don't want to have stutters. And so in particular, when it came to playing Elden Ring, I found this to be a much more enjoyable experience. Another thing I've heard about is that in Horizon Zero Dawn, it actually reduces a lot of stutters that are inherent to this game on the Steam Deck. Now, I've also heard that these stutters occur later on in the game, and I'm only about an hour into the game, so I can't really show that off here. And honestly, I already played through the PS4 version, and so I don't think I'm going to be playing it again. Either way, as you can see, we're getting a pretty stable 40 frames per second, but again, we're having a much lower RAM utilization, anywhere from 2 to 3 gigabytes at any time. And so at least in my very preliminary testing here, yes, there's not a huge difference when it comes to frames per second, but there was a tangible difference in overall smoothness, especially with these higher end games on the Steam Deck. 
Now I do a lot of emulation on my Steam Deck. In fact, this is probably where I play most of my Nintendo Switch games overall. And so we're gonna take the five most common games that I play right now and do the same testing for those. Now, before we get started into that, there is one other setting tweak I need to talk about, and that is SMT or simultaneous multi-threading. By default, SteamOS has this on, which means that all eight threads are gonna run at once while playing any game. And that generally will work very well for PC games, but when it comes to emulation, it's not really the case. For a lot of emulators, especially for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and Nintendo GameCube and Wii, all those actually do better when you use fewer threads and tax them more. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a great example. On the top, we're using the default SteamOS settings, and as you can see, it's using about one to one and a half watts of CPU power at any time. However, when I turn off that simultaneous multi-threading, instead of using eight cores, we're only using four. As you can see, the CPU is being more heavily taxed, but we're getting a much smoother gameplay experience. And to set this up, we're going to use a plugin called Power Tools. And I'll show you how to install it here really quick in case you haven't already installed it. Now I am going to make one assumption here in that you probably already have Emudeck installed if you're going to be running emulators. And if you haven't installed Emudeck, I have an entire tutorial for it also linked below. Regardless, the easiest way to set up Power Tools is to install it via Emudeck. So we're going to go ahead and open up the Emudeck tool that you should have on your desktop. And then once it's loaded up, you're going to go and select the tools and stuff option here on the bottom. From there, the very first option you have is called Power Tools. And again, here you're going to need to add that sudo password that we set up earlier. And the installation process is super simple. All you have to do is type in your password and then select Install Power Tools. From there, just give it a minute. And then on the top right, you should get a notification that says that Power Tools was installed. After that, you're good to go. Go ahead and exit out of Emudeck and then boot back into SteamOS. Now, when you start up a Nintendo Switch game, just go ahead and press the three button icon on the right of your controller, and that'll bring up the Steam Quick Settings here. Now, on the bottom, you should have a little plugin icon. Go ahead and select that, and then select the Power Tools option here. From there, the second option is going to be SMT. What you want to do here is toggle this off. And when you do that, you should see the number of threads reduce from eight to four. And that's it, that's all you really have to do. Just make sure you do this every time you start up a Nintendo Switch game. And so now that we have an apples to apples comparison, we're gonna turn off Cryo Utilities on the top and then turn on Cryo Utilities and four gigabytes of VRAM here on the bottom. And in both of these cases, we are gonna turn the SMT off. And what I found with the Yuzu emulator in particular is that the performance difference here is very similar to high-end PC games. And so as before, we'll see less RAM utilized with the Cryo Utilities on, and then here and there, you will see less CPU and GPU usage, but not by a lot. Now, when it comes to actually playing these games, I'm going to play them all in docked mode in order to max this out as much as possible. But when it came to frame rate, it was basically the same experience. I was still definitely getting dips here and there, especially with certain games like Super Mario Odyssey. But at the same time, I found that I had reduced stutters overall with Cryo Utilities on. And so yeah, I would say my overall experience here is very similar to how it is when trying to play high-end games on the Steam Deck as well. Yes, we are going to save a little bit of resources when it comes to overall utilization, but the real difference here is kind of intangible in the fact that it just results in smoother gameplay. And again, it is kind of hard to show the difference here on the screen because the stutter happens so quickly, and it's also very hard to play the exact same thing on the exact same game between the two. Really, when it comes down to it, if you're looking for a numbers comparison between the two, I think the Cryobyte 33 video he already did does that really well. So if you are looking for things like charts and graphs, then that's the video I'd recommend checking out. At least for me, when it comes to my own gameplay experience, I did feel a tangible difference between the two, but it's not something that's going to like change my life overnight. However, as we start to wrap things up here, that's kind of the beauty of Cryo Utilities. Yes, I would say that it does improve the performance and only by a little bit when it comes to the numbers, at least in my own experience. But for me, it does two very important things. Number one, it gives me smoother gameplay overall. And then number two, I can set this whole thing up in about two minutes altogether. And of course, the best thing about it is that after you do it, you don't really have to deal with it ever again. In the end, if you're wondering whether or not I recommend Cryo Utilities, I think that's a very easy yes. After all, it's very easy to install and comes with a bunch of upsides with no downsides either. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried out Cryo Utilities and which games work best? And also be sure to check out the Cryobyte 33 YouTube page if you want to learn more about Cryo Utilities and how it actually works. As for me, yeah, I'm really happy that I found the tool and I'm definitely leaving it on my Steam Deck. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.